there and welcome to another episode of the Stellar Sound Podcast, the only podcast relatively unknown to Earthlings by rocking it and all the interdimensional space traveling radars. I'm your host, Leonie Paulson, and today I'm joined by the one, the only, Rudy Wittes. But first, to become part of our interstellar presence, find us at stellarsoundpodcast.com and all our social platforms at Stellar Sound, Stella Sound Podcast or join our astronauts in the Stellar Sun Discord community. Links are in the description. Rudy is a multi-genre, multi-instrumentalist from South Africa currently residing in South Korea. From late bloom instrumental lessons to wearing a dress to play in an all-girl band and even teaching preschoolers, Rudy has literally done it all. Recently, he has released a solo acoustic album, Tiny House, which listens like a heady cocktail of raw emotion and real life experiences. Rudy, welcome and how are you today? Hi, uh, thanks for having me. I'm good, thanks. Uh, that's great to hear. So I think let's just jump right into it and I can start asking you a few questions and really get into your psychology and music psychology and just rip your solo pod and bring you back to the core, simple human musician that you are. Just kidding, I won't do that. Um, I would like to start with music lessons. Music okay. lessons is a very strange thing to South Africans. Usually, your parents want you to play an instrument, and they're like, you can relatively keep a note or you can play a rhythm on a drum. Here is really expensive music lessons, and off you go. So, I want to know how did you start your musical journey? Is it in that traditional South African sense, or was there a different path? No, well, um, I mean, I, I grew up in a, in a, in a house where um <laughs> we we didn't have much money um we yeah. have this we have this joke my my mom's name is dalian so it, yeah. if you translate it into afrikaans it means they borrow so she was really <laughs> yeah. good at, at borrowing money so um <laughs> yeah I, which led to a lot of interest and they did they, they just did too many things at once buying house car whatever and then um it led to us growing up really poor um so we 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 never really had um opportunity to 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 study um music um, or have like the traditional um p lessons i want to say just lessons i mean I, what mm. what had happened was um i i met a friend um who had yeah. this i don't i can't even remember what drum set it was but it was this old drum set and they lived oh. on this on this <laughs> yeah. uh, it's called a, it's a small farm but in afrikaans mm -hmm. we call it a plot I don't know yeah. how I don't know any other name for it. Um anyway, so um he had a drum set and he wanted to be, he didn't have any friends. He was bullied a lot at school and I didn't have any friends. <laughs> I was also bullied a lot at school. We went to the wrong school. Yeah. And um horrible school. Oh, I hate that school. Anyway, so <laughs> um uh, I was supposed to go to an art school and then for some reason my dad decided I need to learn trade. Um, so I yeah. barely got through uh, high school, um, and so so he just wanted to make a friend, uh, just make a friend, and then I was like, because I told someone I want to play drums, for some mm. reason I there there was no reason, and then he started teaching me, showed me a book, I forget which book, you get like a like a beginner's book, which it has yeah. all the rhythms, uh, all the books have the same rhythms. It's just different people. And you have a little CD book. that you play with tunes CD with in the, yeah, and so yeah. On and so on. yeah. He, that's the first thing he showed me was to play with the CD. And, um, and then when he showed me the first beat, I got it. And then the second beat, and then uh, it just kept on going. And then afterwards I would just go play drums at his house. I wouldn't even spend time with this guy. <laughs> just rock up, yeah, rock up at his like, house. So just play just the like, drums. <laughs> come play drums i'm like are you sure because i'm gonna be there every day so um, uh, yeah so <laughs> he then, offered it as a nice little thing and you just yeah. showed up every single day every, and he had this <laughs> old drum set but it was cool but then yeah that's how that happened and um i played started playing drums i basically learned either everything from him i never got into the book because i didn't know how to read it i didn't know how to yeah. read the music notation i didn't get it he showed me and I did a few things, but I just didn't get it. Uh, I wasn't interested in it. And um, then my, it was weird. It was a weird time where my brother had started playing guitar. And then I started playing drums, but we never decided on it together. Then my brother joined the, the band. We started the band. So this guy who <laughs> taught me how to play drums, he decided to start playing bass. So we just made a, a three-piece where we just cover stuff. We never sang. 
because none of us could sing. So then the yeah. one learned how to play guitar, the other one learned how to play drums, the other one I learned how to play drums, and my friend learned how mm. to play bass. And um, but no vocals. No, no, <laughs> no, no. This is there's a long. This is there's a story. It's a pretty funny story about that as well. And yeah. um, so then we 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 used. Um, I'm not sure how, but we learned to cover music through uh, tabs. Um, but there was a program, and I don't know where this program came from. We had like this old computer, you know, the screens with the big, big like, uh, 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 like it's it's like this big white like screen. stage, yeah, yeah, the yeah big like, boxy, big boxy computer. screens. Yeah, and uh, we 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 re we somewhere got a guitar guitar pro. Do you know what that is? Yeah, guitar pro. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, so we we started learning uh. Uh, Bad Miller Rising is that the song's name? I see. Oh yes. Da, 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 yeah. da, da. And then so Bad that's Moon my Rising. Dad loved that's it. a cl my, classic. Bad Miller, my dad loved that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, because he's a really big fan of them. And then, um, then the next thing I know, we have my my mom made a my mom and dad made a uh, uh, <laughs> another loan. Mm. I don't know because you get a house loan and then you just have to improve something in your house. So it's a, it's a second mortgage on the house. Oh, oh yeah. They okay, needed the money sense. and then they bought me my first drum set. <laughs> Obviously, they shouldn't have. But um, and then I bought my brother a guitar amp and then and then so on. Then then we started getting into. So now it can be louder. It's my drum set in my house. So I played every every day. And my parents just you like, drove your they parents fine with it. No, no, no they, they were just fine. The, the neighbors, <laughs> the, neighbors <laughs> the neighbors hated you, <laughs> dude. They could hear me down the street, and I, <laughs> I, I don't play really. I'm not a good drummer. I just play really loud, and then, um, <laughs> and then uh, technique. we started technique. playing um, <laughs> System of a Down, and then we started playing Lamb of God. So I received the double kick pedal, and then we started playing Lamb of God, and then. And then my brothers, um, uh, they started writing music, uh, really technical heavy metal. It's called math metal, apparently. I learned years and years later. I don't know. It's a thing. Yeah. I, I, uh, I don't so know yeah, that. That's, <laughs> and then I finally received, um, you know, I started working and then I didn't go to university uh, uh, immediately. immediately. I, yeah. I, I uh, made the readers. Um, <laughs> uh, so I had money for a lesson and then I went... So the band was still going on, and then I had a had a um, lesson, and the guy started off with paradiddles, and I yeah. was not far beyond that. But being young and stupid, I was like, "No, dude, what what are you doing? Like, yeah. I need to learn. I like, I teach me something I don't know." And then he was like doing paradiddles, and then I never practiced them. That's why I'm not really good at playing solos or roles like fills. Yeah, yeah. I'm really not. I'm not, I'm, I'm I'm the worst drummer in the world, <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then, yeah, so that's, I just never received lessons. And then, yeah, it's been so two that's, decades. That's a really interesting, I want to say, foundation for music because that's very based off of learning how to play music off of sound instead of learning strict music notation. And then also, <laughs> I just love how you say, you just played louder because you couldn't play all the smaller, fine, fine tuned techniques. But, I mean, it didn't stop you at all. You still got your lessons. And then how did you end up studying music? Because you said you went for one lesson or two lessons and then you were like, okay, going to go and so, do a degree, diploma, do, do a full-time diploma in music. How do you end up there? Um, I never wanted to study music because I thought all the best songs have already been written. Oh, I okay. thought <laughs> that um, you, you were... You will never be able. I, I thought about this for years and years. That uh, one shouldn't. Why should I write any other songs? The best ones have already been written, and um, and this uh, kind of in the same sense. Like uh, I know I'm not going to make any money being a musician. Uh, but I mean, working, <laughs> general working, opinion, I mean, right there. Some do. Yeah, some do. I don't know what. Have you met any rich musicians? I mean, unless they, the the ones that are signed. Yeah, I mean, they all complain as well. Apparently. But um, you know, I made the readers of readers for what three years, mm -hmm. and uh, I just I, I became so depressed. I, and you know, and uh, I mean, within my extended family, I only know one other person that went to university before I did, and she got a scholarship to become a music te uh, to become a teacher, which is a 
uh, a common thing in South Africa, uh, yeah. which I also didn't know about. If I knew about it, I would have taken uh, taken the opportunity. But um, so she had a scholarship to become a uh, teacher, and then. But what had happened was, I became increasing, increasingly. Um, I want to say I don't know if it was depression, but mm. what had happened was I was tired the entire time because um, morning shift would be. Seven o'clock the morning to three o'clock the afternoon, Monday to Saturday. This is the Dorito Sunday, factory, right? Dorito, yeah. I would make chips, yeah, mm. snacks, whatever you call them, crisps. Snacks. Mm. And um, so that would be Monday to Sunday. Then Sunday would be m- seven o'clock the morning to uh, twelve o'clock at night. And I mean, if it's if it's it's hard labor, it's like yeah. it's it's so much work. And then the next week, it would Monday would be from three o'clock the afternoon to eleven o'clock at night. That's all the way to su- Saturday, Sunday, seven o'clock at night, to all the way through to the next morning, su- sun- uh, Monday morning, seven o'clock. Then that night you go to sleep. Eleven o'clock at night you start working at eleven o'clock graveyard shift all the way to seven o'clock the m- next morning. I mean, who needs sleep, honestly? So it it <laughs> it, it got to a point where I uh, I just I, I was I was worn out. Like even my clothes. I mean, mm. it was a clean factory, but. Because it's it is, there's like five lines, you know. This one is making uh, um, uh, you know uh, puffs with the Cheetos yeah. and the Doritos, Fritos. Blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of like um, smells from the spices. Um, and and uh, so my clothes, I had to throw them all away because I would smell like Doritos or, or Lay's <laughs> chips or Fritos, everything. And I I couldn't get it off of me because um, yeah. So it was. And then some days I would work like twenty hours shifts because there was no one else there and the job had to get done. So. And then there's and complications, then. and there's this and that and that that. I mean, it was it was a it was a job to start with, but it was it was it was. It, it sucked. Was, uh, <laughs> and some people still stay there. I know one of my very good friends is still there, and uh, I don't know how. I don't know. That's, that's insane. That's ever insane. Ever since then, I st- I've struggled to sleep, like um, because I just the constant change of um, of uh, the time the uh, the work schedules the, just work schedule, messed yeah. you up. That's so insane. then, yeah, and then uh, we had this 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 gig because remember we didn't have any singers for the band, <laughs> and then oh, yeah. my brother tried, I tried, everyone tried, and then we had like random people coming singing. Um, this girl sang, and uh, it was like really, I mean, she wasn't a bad singer, but the music was really not. I mean, it was very immature and whatnot, but it wasn't bad. It was just like it wasn't. We didn't know how to write music. She was a good singer, and then we had another guy at my school. He we covered the song, I can't remember what, and he's like, no, dude, let me just take off my shirt because I'm taking steroids and then it'll sound better. And this guy, we like, no, no it's not going to work. And he asked us, <laughs> when are we going to have a band practice for like eight months? No. And, then, and then my brother started <laughs> screaming because we had the, the heavy metal thing going. Uh, and then and then I think after the gig, some some other gig, whatever, uh, oh, with the girl that sang because it was like a folk friend, um, mm-hmm. Uh, older people friendly uh, music. Yeah. It was nice. It was nice. And then um, I, was like, <laughs> I told my 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 dad's my mom's friend. Uh, they've been friends of the family for years. I'm like, I don't know what to do because I'm not very happy with my job. And she's like, Why don't you just go? She she pointed to the drums after the gig. Like all the drums were like um, broken down mm. on the living lo- room floor. And she's like, Why don't you just go study music? And I'm like, eh. And then I thought about it for like uh, a week or two. And I said, But I'm not gonna make any money. I don't know how. How do you make money with music? And then I thought, ah, oh, teacher. So then, then yeah, that's how I study uh, started. And then my first that's... lessons started with uh, at the university, which is yeah. It's insane. <laughs> Just to decide one night, okay, I'm gonna go do this. This is what I'm gonna go do, and then apply for it. But you applied to initially with the auditions. You applied to do classical guitar or to receive classical guitar training, and then that went real wrong right well um it was um so the thing is within within music and within classical music within um in in a, in a deve- are we a south africa developing country third world country it's border- third, borderline third, right yeah borderline i would say borderline yeah so there's not a lot of music so if anyone wants to study music and anyone is willing to put in the work you um it's not easy but uh, the universities, uh, some of the universities tend to assist you a lot more because you need you need the money as a university and so on, which yeah. is fair, which is it's realistic. But um, what had happened was um, they needed they wanted to get in more students and 
you know, uh, the cello or the violin is not very popular anymore in, in South Africa. Classical music is not popular. Not popular, but, yeah, for sure. Um, not the guitar, in people know what a guitar looks like. And then anyway, so between the the me quitting the job and uh, or like almost getting depressed or whatever, um, uh, bands breaking up, I started playing guitar because, you know, I was just a drummer alone. Started mm. playing guitar. Somehow I passed the audition. But uh, with that said, there's a little bit of a backstory there. Um, and then, um, so... I was like, okay, I can play enough guitar to be able to learn how to play classical music guitar. You know, mm. be, become a classical guitarist, not the best, yeah. but I would be able to. I You'll know what this instrument it. looks yeah. like, and then I will be able to learn from it. You know, there's a lot to learn, and it's not it's not the easiest thing to do in the world. Obviously not, but it was something that I knew. Mm. And then I got through the audition. Um, um, you know, um, but then I think I so. Between me working, buying a car, all that stuff, I left everything. I gave my uh, my um, my we call uh, it a no, retirement no, fund, retirement yeah. fund to my my parents so they can uh, pay off their electricity bill, so they can have electricity again. And I gave my car, car to my mom, paid off whatever I could. So I basically started from from nothing and then uh, worked my through way through university, paid my way through university. So I gave up uh, physically everything. Now, I didn't know yeah, anything from purged. university or or any any anything about classical music. I was just like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. They said the diploma program at this university. They said, if you know if if you're good enough to get through the audition, we can get you through to a BA or a bachelor's degree. In which music, is not yeah. The, yeah, yeah, in, uh, in music. Um, I mean. Which is a very good beginning for me, and uh, as a as a just a person. And then mm. I got through the audition. I bought like three guitars, um, or one classical guitar and one acoustic guitar, just just because yeah. I didn't know what I needed. And uh, I gave up everything. And now I'm at the university. We have orientation and so on. And um, and then I was called in by uh, our director. Um, he was a jazz musician, so he was like, so um, there's a problem with the paperwork. You cannot study classical music, uh, classical guitar. You have to choose between the flute and the cello. And I'm like, but this is after you've ga- given, given up everything, given up everything. I've, I've three signed guitars. into university. I've made my student loan loans. I've signed. Yeah. I even got like a, a little laptop because I I, yeah. pay, I made more debt to get into this situation. And then like so ready. now I have nothing. <laughs> this is where I'm supposed to be. I I have to make this work or I have nothing because I'm making I'm making student loans. And I have to pay my own way through university. Yeah, and you're then, ready. <laughs> um, so this, he told us, he told us the two of us, two of us. He's like, so you guys, I mean, you gotta choose the flute and then, or the cello. I'm like, well, okay. Um, and I remember, <laughs> cool. I'm used to like, I'm used to when at work. Once you start working, you work. You don't. Yeah. You start working, right? You, don't, you once you once I get here, I'm gonna we, now we work now. And then, mm. because I waited for, for uh, I don't know why the orientation started so early anyway. So, waited for weeks. The One of the lecturers that uh, became one of my very good friends, uh, or, well, she started liking me. Um, we, we got off on the wrong foot because it's like, hey, when is the lesson starting? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I want to start. Anyway. You're like ready to so jump much. and no, then she's just like, you need a break. <laughs> nobody understood that I gave up so much. It was just a yeah. thing that nobody understood. And um, They and, didn't know uh, your background. Um, That's the problem. No, no, yeah. And then... Um, and then, yeah, so I don't know how um, someone told me, okay, you're going to have cello lessons. I walked over there because I walked to university and I walked over this bridge. Oops. And then uh, I walked over this bridge and um, and uh, this little bridge between over the university. And I was thinking, what does a cello look like? I don't know what a cello <laughs> looks like. And like then, <laughs> and then okay. my, my, my... Uh, my cello coach or teacher, he showed me what a cello looks like, and then somehow I started playing it. I don't know how. Um, Similar to like, almost like that. I just picked up the drums so easily. I think you I picked know, up the cello as well. But I was well. 21. I was 21. I'm not supposed to be there. I'm not supposed to be in this well, situation. I'm not supposed to be here. Remember, it's a situation for, where the university yeah. needs money, or this program needs money. So they just like take people in. It's South Africa. Like it's there's not a lot Charity of charity cases. So, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And then, um, and then I don't know. We just uh, we just got to work, and then uh, we just I, I don't know. I don't know. I, the next thing I know, I'm in your uh, in orchestras, and I can play and read music. Um, oh yeah, because you you couldn't you couldn't read music before you started at all. 
no, yeah. no. And I had so this did... cello. <laughs> I had this <laughs> cello. And it was in an army bag. So whenever I'm not working a part-time job, I'm I'm practicing the cello at home yeah. as much as possible. But it, it was like I was renting this cello. And it was renting this, it, it was yeah. it was the it was this it was the weight of a of a of a cabinet. It was like a little yeah. you know like a little side table next to your bed. It was like yeah. that. It was like this, this, it felt like a coffee table. It was like okay. really heavy and really old. And it had this old bag that looked like an army bag. And then yeah, what would often happen is um people were like, I really like your guitar. I'm like, you don't even know what this guitar looks like. So people don't know what the the cello is and then or otherwise I, I would give like um i get bullied <laughs> taking, no. my, taking my by the jocks i'm gonna they are taking my, <laughs> taking my cello to university oh yeah. that's me that's just the worst but that's interesting because like you said when you got there and you asked your professor what does a cello even look like that's a common thing in south africa especially with the string instruments they are there is a a, a hefty group of violinist but cello you players have to mean like a lot a lot of a lot of them yeah a lot a lot but there's not a lot of cello players or there's not a big group of cello players it's, it's a, expensive it's, it's expensive and it's a dying instrument in south africa so it was it's interesting that you chose that and took that on well i didn't really choose it it just kind of like happened <laughs> it was Remember? shoved upon you <laughs> yeah like I here never really chose it. yeah Okay, so we have a, like, in the world of music, we have the two sides of the spectrum, amateur trained musicians and classical trained musicians. And usually you either as a musician fall, falls into one of the either. If you're an amateur trained musician, you will usually eventually get some type of formal training, yeah. but it's not at the at the level of a classically trained musician, which goes real into music depth, music technique, et cetera, et cetera. And what we see is that, as I said, most musicians stick to either one of those titles with a few, like a tiny handful of musicians that actually do both or dabbles in both sides. Uh, I think of Slash immediately that did a full music degree or a, a postgraduate music degree, but he's also known as a massive rock star. I didn't rock know star, that. Obviously. When, you, when you sent me that, uh, yeah. that example, I didn't know. It's... He is he is so well trained. It's insane. But he I don't I don't know his full history or his journey. But he ended up becoming a rock star instead, which is amazing in either way. But because you you've had you've put a foot in both sides of those worlds. You are an amateur trained musician, but you ended up going to study music formally. So there's a general opinion that says if you want to be a great musician on that classical level, like Beethoven or Mozart or whatever, you have to be classically trained. There's no other way about it. But do you think that's the correct opinion? Or what What do you think of that opinion, opinion because you've been trained on both sides? Can you be a great musician and also not just be classically trained? It's such a difficult question. Uh, um, because <laughs> I also, I've been thought of, uh, thinking about this for a few days as well. Um, I'm challenging okay, you today with all these ex existential questions. <laughs> let's 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 take the, the uh, some of the greats. Um, 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 you know, uh, just coming to mind as uh, Rostropovich, uh, Misha Maisky, yes, Yo-Yo Ma. Um, uh, what's the blonde lady? Uh, was it Nadine? Oh, you got me. I had no idea who you were talking about, but you're gonna you're gonna find a name soon. Um, anyway, oh, yeah, let's say, let's uh, anyway, so, so yeah, let's those, those are all, uh, Isaac Perlman, uh, Perlman, Isaac, Isaac Perlman, mm. yeah, um, Isaac Perlman, yeah, so, so, so those, those, um, those are exceptional situations where, where you, where it, you meet someone who's, who's not only got the talent and you uh, somehow the, the, the coach or the teacher find it as a, a at a very young age, they just, they either have a lot of experience mm. and know that the student will get to that point or they just yeah. they just they just give it a go and then see what happens um and being having all the advantages it's not always going to make a greater musician because the thing is at the end of the day you need the drive you need to be able to be one of those per people that wants to do this you know um mm. i mean imagine uh yo-yo ma's life 
the, like he what he he moved countries and at the age of what four five six he just played yeah he played for uh, the president in america and then that's what he's been playing when he turned 60 he was playing a cello for 50 years and that just oh wow that just doesn't happen for everyone but with that said it's the approach of a teacher is so invaluable because it could it could seriously get someone to get uh, from just being someone who dabbles in classical music to become to becoming a full time orchestra musician, someone who f f uh, finds a, a string quartet and makes a lot of money because you can make a lot of money on playing in, uh, in a string quartet. You just need the the right yeah. people, and you know. So um, I feel like um, I feel like. Firstly, you need you need to you need to have a thick skin. But amateur versus classical musician trained musicians, I've unfortunately I've met a lot of classical musicians around the world that that just they just stop playing classical music or they don't want to yeah. open mic night it's classical music. Open mic night for classical musicians don't exist um, mm. because they just feel like it's more work. Um, uh, it's something that happened where they just like it all the joy has been taken away because either it's too much work or it's too difficult or someone didn't know how to approach them as a student or something bad happened it's it's it, there's a lot that could go wrong and then amateur musicians um you know they have the drive they have the will they have the passion and you find a lot of people yeah. that have a lot of passion and they, they geek out about bands or musicians and this this passion um does grow and it does grow uh, an idea and sometimes they, they just end up like becoming massive massive stars but the thing is is um is in some cases uh if if that person if the amateur can uh get his ego and put his or her ego aside that's where that amateur position uh, musician becomes better or greater or possibly superstar the ego often gets yeah. in the way uh but so with I the classical musician it's kind of like with the ego tends to get uh, sometimes destroyed in some ways i guess yeah yeah so yeah. to become a great musician is uh, i think I, I would agree with you is uh when you say that it's more about the drive and the motivation instead of the training it doesn't matter whether you're amateur amateur trained or classical trained it's about the drive and if you don't have that drive at the end you're of the not going to be matter. anything yeah it doesn't matter yeah. but i liked how you used yo yo ma and mishra maiski and everyone as um examples because if we think about it, we as both classically classically trained musicians know about these people. But if you go to the person on the street and go like, hey, do you know who Mishka Mashki is? They're going to be like, Mishka Mashka yeah, They're going to yeah. be like, completely. But if you ask any kid in any part of the world who Beyonce is or whatever, Justin, they're going to be like, just, oh yeah, they can, Justin Bieber. They're going to know who that is. Yeah. Justin Bieber. So yeah. I want to know, oh, Justin Bieber. There's not hate on the Justin Bieber. Maybe no, no, there's someone out there really likes him. I have a very positive opinion about him. Have a very, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, don't I, don't, know. I don't I don't think one could get there without having a lot of talent and the right drive. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just on a different level. He just makes a lot more money than the other one, but the drive is the same. But Okay, I agree with you that. But that that is what I want to go into because if you think about it, all these amateur trained musicians, let's say Justin Bieber or even every other YouTuber that makes a diss track or an influencer that brings out an album that doesn't really even understand what they're doing, they get stadiums full of audiences coming to watch them. But if you can fill a proper concert hall anywhere in the world, it's rare. And it's usually the oldest side of the humankind peoples that attend these concerts. So, so what do you the think... You're saying so, that, but do you think uh, classic, classical music is come to, uh, yeah, to I'll, watch yeah, to watch concerts? You won't yeah. you, you won't find ten thousand, hundred thousand screaming girls at a Mishka Maisky concert, Yo Yo Ma concert at all. But why why does it seem that music, classical music, as a popular music, is dead? Why why aren't these great classical musicians? seen as rock stars in that sense why do you think they are lacking compared to let's say jay-z or whatever justin bieber taylor swift that's a tough one no i also thought about this a lot so firstly firstly it's very very important that that uh, to remember that 
the life that we live now is much different than when um when Mozart was composing his his symphonies. Mm. Back then, you had you had a lot more. Okay, it was a lot more of a tough life, but you had a lot more time. I feel like, as far as I, the way that I understand it is, is back then, you know, you had to travel, let's say, three months to get to, you know, five five hundred miles away or whatever. So it's you, the the it was understood that life was more difficult. Therefore, you had more time. Okay, and when you go yeah. watch a concert, you had more time to. If you go watch Mozart or whoever play or whoever play, we all understood that all of this was written by hand. So everything took a lot longer. Everything took a lot longer. Okay, and this allowed people to 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 slow down, even though life was really hard, because everything took a lot longer. I have the theory that it it allowed people to enjoy more of the intricate things, and also, yeah, there was no other. There was very little uh, forms of uh, entertainment. So, once you start getting, uh, once you start going down the rabbit hole, uh, with with the classical music, it 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 built within this era because, um, because they had the opportunity. But then then what happened is 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 slowly it starts changing, and then uh, you know Liszt uh, and, and 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 what's the violinist? Um, he's got the the most difficult. He was a flashy violinist. I forget. Anyway, let's let's say let's let's for example. Um, uh, so he became the rock star, and then now, like out of the uh, romantic period of uh, classical music, it, they become uh, so they they're not servants to kings or whomever anymore. They become rock stars, yeah. right? And uh, and um, and then then success take over for these musicians. But also being able to be play playing like Liszt or Rachmaninoff or so on. That's it's a real skill. So, anyway, so within the era, this this happened, and then, and then, sorry, I forgot, I forgot my point. Oh yes, yes. So then, <laughs> then technology came about, and guitars, and whatever, 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 pop music, and uh, and all this stuff. So, I think it's it's such a it's it's a very it's a very difficult balance between between the two arts because one is 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 you need to understand niche. you need to understand classical music to in to, to in order to enjoy it but also not if i do not listen to classical music on 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 in recorded versions i i it's it's not the same it's it kills you 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 yeah. you can have you can have the best musicians uh record amazing amazing amazingly okay there's one recording that i just i, I can't I, I would always listen to it from misha maisky uh, where he was young and he had the suit and he was sitting on this little podium and he played the Bach suites. That yeah. it's like what they the, what they did there was magical. But um, but it, it, it loses. The, it's like these mics are not good enough to to capture the magic. It's so difficult to capture the magic of these brilliant musicians. But then when you go yeah. see an orchestra in real life, then it feels like um, we we watched um we. I, a bunch of us. Uh, I think you were also there. Uh, we 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 went to one of the cities in South Africa, Pretoria, and then we watched uh, the Royal Gebouw uh, Concert Orchestra. Okay, what does the, the orchestra from Holland? I think Royal Gebouw Concert yeah. Orchestra. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah. Got it. And then uh, the 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 amazing violinist. I forget her name. Uh, she's long brown brown hair. Uh, she played uh, Tchaikovsky. Uh, concerto in D, I think number two, whatever. Anyway, I, f I forgot. It's a long time ago. Anyway, so but you could feel the music. You could feel it. It was it was mm. where the melody from the violin, uh, uh, the soloist went down, and it felt like it was hopping on the on the on the strings of the cello. But uh, so yeah. so, uh, um, to experience it as you, you have would to be there in person. A... But here's the problem: yeah. is if you if if you could just if 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 you could just have someone just come and watch. And I've done this before when we, we played with a uh, university orchestras where I invited my friends and we played Star Wars themes and stuff like that. Then they're like, they freak out because they didn't know. And then, then they're fans for life. But it's, it's, mm, yeah. it's getting, it's getting, uh, it's, it's just getting people there because it's, it, and there is a very big culture around, uh, around classical music and so on. But there is unfortunately a thing where, also, where it's, there's a gate. Someone, there's a, there are a bunch of gate holders and, you know, if if you're not part yeah. of this world, then you're not welcome. And I, it's but maybe not on purpose, but that just happens. And um, 
Yeah. And I also think, uh, just to fall in with your opinion, I fully agree with you, especially if you bring around friends and they play, let's say, the Star Wars themes, even Game of Thrones themes. Themes, yeah. And everyone loves it. But I think more also that uh, amateur concerts, amateur trained musician concerts or popular music concerts have a lot of more showmanship, you know, choreography, lights, fireworks. I don't know. You know, they got like the full spectrum of showmanship. Whereas if you're going to have to go watch an hour long concert where it's just an orchestra and you've got to sit there, a lot of people get bored. Yeah, so I'm... the popular music is associated with a with a with a showmanship, I whereas th- maybe, when you yeah. go to your classical music, you gotta you gotta listen and enjoy it. Read about and the, I think the that piece pa- that's playing, and I think that part of um, concert going is rather becoming less popular. People don't want to go and do the research, or don't want to go understand it, or just listen. They want the quick, instant entertainment, which popular music gives i do i do believe though that the 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 cello production has gone up because of pop music music in string quartets and and uh, pop music on cellos and stuff like that yeah Uh, movies uh, romanticize them and then the hosier um yeah yeah uh, uh, especially then yeah i'm I'm not gonna go great 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 cellist uh, I think it's the way he smiles. It just like gets to me, dude. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah. So I, I think <laughs> I think there's a lot to learn. But at the end of the day, it's what anyone needs to remember is w- whichever um, music genre you're in. It's if if you're not gonna create your own room, then it's not gonna happen. Meaning mm. that if you're not gonna if you're not gonna record your own album, if you're not gonna do this, don't wait for someone to do it for you. You just gotta do it. Just do it. Make your own show. Uh, make you can. We've done this many times before, and it worked. Where we have house parties, and then we have shows at house parties, and it was the best shows ever because you just make it. You just create it yourself. You make. You gotta you create make the, the entertainment, stage, right? Just do it. And it's the same with the classical musicians. If you have that can-do DIY attitude, then the next thing you know, you're gonna have like a lot of people hooked in. Uh, I don't know. I've, I, I'm pretty sure someone has tried starting an orchestra, and I, I'm pretty sure they've su- succeeded. So it's possible in many ways. I'm thinking the first thing I've thought of is Andre Ryu, and I'm not the biggest fan, but I mean, <laughs> I mean that guy's he amazing. is huge. That guy, that guy, that guy is huge, and he start. I don't know if he started the orchestra, but their costumes, their showmanship, it's all. Even now that you mention it, eh? Like Hans Zimmer, he's a. Everyone knows Hans Zimmer. Everyone knows Hans Zimmer's music. Everyone loves his music, but he started an orchestra that he travels around with yearly, annually, and they have these insane epic shows. And I think that is also reigniting a little bit of love for the classical music. But I mean, he pulls out all the stops. It just, it just depends. It just depends. The thing is, if you're gonna wait for someone, a teacher, to tell you you're gonna be uh, uh, famous or popular or good, then it's not gonna happen. If you wait for someone, Mm. just gonna do it. And then uh, that's why I like stand-up comedy so much because it's the idea of um, of going up, trying a joke, bombing, and then reinventing your joke. Free right. The idea, the mentality that most stand-up comedians have, it's like I wish more musicians would go would lean that way because the the idea that someone tells you that you're only as good as your last show that's not fair. That's not fair. Mm. You just it depends on what you do next. You know. Yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. That's a really good way. When someone tells you you're only it. as good as the last show, no, that's no. Oh, so I did a little bit of online stalking. I shouldn't say stalking; it's a criminal offense. But I'm gonna—I I did some light-hearted online stalking, and what I like about your Instagram page is that you would not post for three months at the end, and then you would just do a gigantic photo dump. So I went through all your photo dumps. It was—it didn't take much time, but it was very interesting. And I want to look at a couple of those photos from your socials and then I want to hear stories from them because they seem very interesting like they would have a backstory just for those listening head on over to our Stellasan podcast YouTube page or join the Discord community to have a look with us so I am going to attempt to share my screen let me quickly just do this I mean I'm the best tech expert we have in this room today share screen and then much better than I am <laughs> I mean you know, you're not without your faults. 
let's do this. Okay. Ah, I think I got it. Okay. Let's see. Look at that photo. It looks insane. You look very different. I must say. What is the story? The hair. The hair, the bear, and the just three tattoos that I can see instead of like full on sleeves. But what, what, what is this? What is happening in this photo? Why were you there and what were you doing? I wish I remember who took the photo. So this is, um, it's called school bar, a school bar in Beijing. Yeah. It's, it's m- most prom- uh, predominantly a uh, punk rock band, a uh, punk rock scene. Mm. Um, the owner Felix, um, is pretty cool. They've got like Japanese, um, uh engineers yeah the sound is amazing amazing um back there is jamie um he used to be in uh we uh, we we used to have this band called tiny knots where i was a bassist and he was a drummer uh, and then i was a backup screamer trying to sing vocalist uh, i had not learned how to sing yet and uh, i was just i would i i really enjoyed playing the bass and i would just really get into it and this is probably one of our best shows ever where we just we just it was it was just like it just went and um and once once uh i get in stage as a bassist i just kind of i don't know what happens but there's like this uh, i unlock uh, something where i just i'm all over the show in a good way and uh and yeah so i i think i was singing or something or telling people to shout with me and then yeah yeah, and that bass is probably the worst bass in the world. It's the worst bass <laughs> like in the world. Bought it at a at a pawn shop in in like it's it's so bad and it's heavy. It's really heavy and it's got like all these frets, which doesn't make sense. But yeah, that's when we just started in Beijing. We just moved from South Korea to Beijing, uh-huh. and um, yeah, it looks really cool. Yeah. You look like you're really enjoying yourself. Yeah. But let's move on to the next one. Complete opposite of the previous photo. This one we look very dapper. And you have your cello. I'm assuming that's not the cello that you had in South Africa, though. The the boxy army bag cello. No. Uh, no, this is the this is the cello. Which one is that? I had I had two cello cellos in Beijing. Uh, this one is still in Beijing. It's uh, I don't have it with me right now. It's a it's a it's a student cello, but it's, oh, it's just the best cello in the world. It's just oh god, it's amazing. Um, um, and then um, this was this was a, an ad. For a, a Chinese credit card company that I did in, in just outside of Beijing, Huangzhou. Uh, Huangzhou. Yeah, I think. What is Huangzhou? Yeah. Uh, anyway, it was just a city outside of um, Beijing, and then we did a. We started at ten o'clock at night, um, and then I played basically cello for ten. Uh, for eight o'clock. No, we yeah, started eight o'clock until eight o'clock the next morning. Yeah, I played cello for like ten hours or something. This is all during the night. <laughs> Why? And um, we did like this whole shoot for this credit card ad, which came out. Um, uh, you're asking why do we shoot during the night? Why did you shoot because for ten was, hours? Was a, I know nothing about editors. Ad- 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 and the director wanted a lot of footage because my footage somehow was oh. mostly used within the the ad, and um, he needed a lot of footage to make it interesting. So. Yeah, I'm sure this is still up no, on YouTube you know, there's, somewhere. There's a, there's a those, thing I, I have want to go stalk. I, I, I don't own the video, but uh, the people who I asked the people whether I can post it or not, and they said it's fine because of the Chinese um, copy copyright laws. It's fine, I guess. So I have the video. Um, just, I can't put it on YouTube. Oh yeah, they think I'm copywriting the 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 um the thing. But yeah, I can send you the video if you want. But I, I'm the not original. according to them. Anyway, so yeah, for, uh, um, yeah, we we had to shoot. We had to shoot during night because it. those lights. That's not that's not the sun. Those are lights because they. Um, uh, you see how it it looks like it's, uh, uh, it's morning dew kind of. So they've got sage, and they they run around. Yeah, yeah, they, that's they what they sage it up, and they've got the lights. It took forever to set up. They sage lights, and then, and then yeah, they took all these photos which I didn't know about. And I have like a bunch of them, and uh, this is one of my favorite. But um, yeah, I had even a, an assistant to clean my shoes, and so that's on. a good so photo. I, I made a, a bit of money on this as well, so that's Jeez. pretty cool. Yeah. 
Uh, but I want to move on to you mentioned your band Muti or Tidy Knots that became Muti. And this was a band that you st- started in Asia or in uh, Beijing Korea. with your bandmate in Korea, sorry, uh, with your bandmate Tyron. And then in 2020, if I'm not mistaken, early 2020, you guys released your first debut, finally released your first debut album after all of the struggles that you just mentioned. Um, Muti is not a well-known word to non-South Africans. So tell us what what is Muti and why did you guys rename your band Muti? So um, it was a little bit confusing because Tidy Knots was just a name we just came up with. Tie Die Knots and then the, the singer's yeah. name was Tyron, T-Y, and my last two letters, D-I, Rudy. <laughs> That's where that name came up. Mm. And, uh, and we... Creative. We had the three piece where the drummer was still there, and then um, no, it's not. It's lame. Uh, then we had a, <laughs> we had the three piece, this rock band, whatever. Yeah. And then I played a cello, and we had an acoustic set. I don't know what else to call it. Acoustic guitar, cello. Mm. We sang, and that was called Muti, and we we love this name because what it what it means Muti is African medicine in South Africa now. Yes. African medicine or traditional medicine in South Africa or Africa could be either very, very uh, graceful, beautiful, and very wholesome, and it can become very dark. Um, Yeah. So, Muti replaces life, the word life, because life is up and downs. So, because Muti, uh, you know, it's a traditional African medicine. Uh, uh, it could it could help a lady through period pains or whatnot. You know, some herbs. It could it mm-hmm. could heal scars, skin problems. You know, using herbs. And then the dark mm-hmm. side is people got mur- get murdered for um for limbs to make uh to make mm. um you know private parts grow or make private parts stronger or give them superpowers. Uh, so people actually get mur- get killed for <laughs> yeah. So, so it's 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 a very big circle of of what this word means and that's why we used it because uh being in this band was just like it was up and down up and down up and down a lot of lot of lot of struggling years a lot of dark a lot but of a lot of light years. places Remember, this as is well me going through depression mm-hmm. my friend going through depression this that this that it was it it's uh yeah so the the, the album actually helped my friend to, out, out of depression that's why i, so, I so suggested we use his solo songs to get him out of depression because then i started writing on on my daw Logic Pro, mm. so I used his songs, his recordings. I, I told him, just record me one song. And then I, I made an example. Uh, the first song was Seasons. And then the next thing I know, I get him out of depression and we wrote like 35 songs. And then we mm. only chose the best 10. Um, yeah, so so that's, that's, that's why you, we use, yeah. use the word Muti because um, it... It's a very, it's a very uh, reflective of your journey with the band. Um, a lot of dark places, a lot of light places, and that... The music was very medicinal, if I can put it that way. It was your medicine to cure a lot of bad stuff as well for both of you, I think. Um, if we look on your on your Instagram or even just your Spotify and Deezer, we see that um, Muti's debut album was very heavily based off of the Flower Dahlia and its color scheme. And I want to ask you about Dahlia because... I've heard, I've never brought out an EP or album or anything, but I hear that naming your first album is like naming your firstborn child. It's very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. A, very, a lot of pressure, yeah. right? I mean, you set them up I mean, for I, life, I think. I'm not dad, but I could, like, comparing those two seems <laughs> odd, but it's very difficult al- naming an album. I'm not sure about a kid, but yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's, it's how you set up the kid or the album for life. Uh, but you set up your kid. That is, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you said you set up your kid for life. You give them a shit name, then they're gonna be uh, a shitty person. <laughs> I understand. Like, oh, uh, but your okay, kids freedom. Yeah, Free- okay. yeah, I mean, there's people that believe in that. I don't know. Okay, but uh, why the dahlia flower specifically? Because if if you, I do not know what the meaning nothing, of the dahlia means. To do with but the flower. it had nothing to do with the flower. Um, so oh, you, okay, you okay. Search, tell me about Alia. For the if you search for uh, if you search up the symbolism, it means it, it it has a lot of different meanings in different cultures. You know, um, so it really can mean er- anything to you. It depends. It depends from person mm-hmm. to person. Um, so 
wait, my friend helped me, my, my bandmate. Adalia has many meanings depending on people, cultures, and colors. So I guess you could just say people can find their own meaning in the flower as they find their own meanings in songs. Okay, so that's his uh, explanation. Uh, my bandmate Tyron, he's the lead vocalist and guitarist yeah. and bassist and co-producer. Anyway, so and then the other thing was is we 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 um we want to name our our, our uh, uh, album Dahlia because they that was the first heavy metal club in South Africa that we played in, and it was called mm. Black Dahlia, like Black Dahlia Murderer, because they tried to be really cool, yeah, and yeah. Not, but we always like edgy yeah, and so we always just uh, rounded out to uh, Dahlia. We're gonna go to Dollar. That was mm. our university, the, our university of life, and you would meet like everyone. Yeah. So Dahlia was, oh, it was the coolest place ever. It was so cool, and we had our first gig there as heavy metal band, and it was just like it was so. That's where you would go. We we would go there, and then we would go uh, watch bands, play pool, get drunk, um, and then go to the <laughs> go to. Um, the Kenton Park Hospital. There was this hospital that, that closed because apparently too many people died. <laughs> yeah. and I was always, just, always too scared to go in. So I just went in the car, but my friends yeah. would go in. And there's this like, creepy hospital. So we, those were, oh. we always think back to those days. And it was just so, we had so many friends from everywhere. Uh, and it's, or just different mm. walks of life within South Africa. And um, it, was just the, it was just the best, best time. Just the best, best time. And then uh, oh. we, we wanted to name it Dahlia. And they were like, well, what, what are we going to put on the, we can't pay the, put the photo of the, of the um, bar, Black Dollar Murderer. Yeah. <laughs> we, that's not why we named it Dollar. Because then it we would be. Dahlia because Dahlia yeah. our minds were like beautiful. It wasn't the murder thing. We didn't even know that was a bar. We it, just knew it as bar. It Dahlia. was the experience yeah. instead of the actual location. Black Dollar Murderer until years later. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> we just knew it as Dahlia. And, um. And uh, and then that's what we wanted to name our, our band. And then we found the symbolism for Dahlia. So again, with Muti, it was like you can you can just decide what you want you want out of it. And then you can decide what you want out of it. Yeah. yeah. And then we chose chose a black and blue because it's like a it's it's like someone in a fight. Like just getting to make this album was like we getting punched and and uh, yeah. Yeah, he like, literally got yeah, got out of bruises, it black, being black, black and, black and, and blue. blue. And that's why we stick stick. The, to those um, colors, yeah. And I was wondering, when you moved to Asia, you've been in several places in Asia itself. Has that affected your musical writing style from what it was when you were back in of South course. Africa full time? Because you you have this golden opportunity by meeting foreigners from all around the world. Oh yeah. And you would definitely you and you get many ears from all around the world. Mm. So you truly learn um what is good and what's mm. not and the people are very honest and if you if you write a song and it works people will move but if it doesn't work people won't move and you feel it if you want to if you want to test out whether the song is good or not go take it out to open mic night or stage and then see Crowd if it works. reaction if it would sound amazing in your room or the practice room whatever go because this is this is thing that happens with the air mm. which like is honesty and mm. truth and so you really learn, and I've, I've played with a lot of bands in, in Beijing as well. So you just learn, you, it's like there's an there's a international level of musicianship in like, for example, Beijing. Oh, dude, the musicians in Beijing are amazing. And I'm not talking about just the locals, the foreigners, everyone. And you would meet everyone from everyone. Insane talent. Everywhere. And then, and then um, so you really learn how to not play to the room, but truly write in a way that, that is good. Mm. Is it good or is it not? I'm not trying to say like write pop music, but music. Put your ego aside. Does this work? Yeah, does this not work? That's what it. That's, that's what it does. And you meet so many people, and they will be honest. Like this works. This sounds bad. This sounds good. This sounds bad. And there's um, nothing is more honest than a crowd in Beijing. I think open mic night crowds yeah. are the most honest crowds available. Because if you're gonna write a song and it's stupid, because he shouldn't say the music is stupid, but that. It's it, gonna, I suppose because they they don't know they they don't know your music. They're so gonna let you know. It's it's, it's either you you sink or swim, and uh, yeah, I saw this with the last open mic mm -hmm. night. Um, I I definitely did swim though, uh, but just because of the experience that I've had in in you know uh, South Korea, yeah, with the know, open. Uh, you know Cambodia and and Thailand and and mm -hmm. and, and Beijing, 
just just because I know I just knew it would work, yeah. and uh, it's just out of experience, just because I've I've had so many different, I've been lucky enough to meet many musicians, good or bad, and also many listeners from all around the mm. world. So it's uh, it's it really forces you to to step up your game. Step and, up uh, your game is a good. And one, I think that's yeah. why most people want to move to America because that's where it's where. That's where they have that mentality with musicians. Where it's very saturated, very... You know, with pop musicianship. Pop musicianship yeah, I it's a say. very sink or swim type situation. And you've got to adapt to become successful, I think. Uh, but it's, it's good, good because it creates better it, uh, art. Of course, it creates better art. It's not easy for the artist. You just got to... It's not easy. A lot of uh, dark days. Yeah. Rudy, it's time to behold... Behold the meteor shower. So what this section is, um, I'm going to ask you a couple, a couple of rapid fire questions and you're just supposed to answer the first thing that comes to mind without thinking. Spontaneous okay. answers. So um, when I ask you, are you ready? And you give me the go ahead, we're going to start it. So Rudy, are you ready for the meteor shower? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. If you could be an instrument, which one would you be? <laughs> Stumped on the first I know one. This. <laughs> I, I know. I know this. I know this. Uh, I, I would be. I would be the cello. Oh, nice. Yeah. SpongeBob or Patrick? Yeah. Patrick. Patrick. Are there more wheels or more doors in the world? This is a controversial one. It's a big debate right now. Are there more, more doors? More doors. Are oh, you on the door side? That's interesting. Ooh. Cabinet doors, house doors, car doors. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plane doors, yeah, doors, obviously. What are the yeah, wheels though? Not wheels, doors. <laughs> uh, let's all start the day. <laughs> people, people stop, stop roller skating. People don't There's roller a... skate anymore. There's, There's no more wheels. We shouldn't start lot, this lot debate. We'll be here the whole day. There is someone okay, in the comment okay. is going off. Okay. Doors, yeah. Which movie has the best soundtrack? Up. Up. Oh, that's a good one. I forgot Up, about it. And then secondly, um, The Secret Life of Wal Walter Mitty. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, Secret Odyssey Life. Odyssey from, uh, from, um, from uh, that scene. Oh, yeah. it's, so good. it's so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which friend's character are you? <laughs> Chandler. <laughs> Chandler. You're a Chandler. Yeah. You're a Chandler. Yeah. Um, concerts or clubs? Concerts. Concerts. Good one. Hans Zimmer or John Williams? Who's John Williams again? Uh, Star Wars, Jaws, Why can't I remember who that E.T. Is? Oh, no, no, no. Hans Zimmer, of course. Hans Zimmer, of yeah, course. Okay. Of course, dude. Okay. This is a difficult one, so you've got to really yeah. listen to it. Who would win in an epic <laughs> battle? A hundred hamster-sized lions or one lion-sized hamster? I'll repeat the question. Wait, a hundred? A hundred hamster-sized yeah, lions. So teeny tiny lions or one lion-sized hamster? The hundred uh, hamster-sized lions. Oh, good. Hamster-sized lions. Hmm. It's a weird phrase. And then the last one. The piranhas. They like piranhas. <laughs> piranhas, yeah. right? I had that thought as well. They're like tiny, tiny little piranhas then. Last question for this section. Best song of all time. One song though, only one. <laughs> you gotta yeah, narrow it down. <laughs> I just caused the existential crisis with Rudy right now. <laughs> hurt, hurt, but hurt, hurt. Not the original. The original is amazing, of of course. Hurt by Johnny Cash. Ooh, oh, that's a good one too. That is a good one. Well done. Okay, I want to. The, I, the original is amazing, but yeah, the the the, the, the cover. That's a good one. It's a good answer. Uh, I want to move on to the next section, where basically why we're here. Your first solo acoustic album called Tiny House. You wrote it primarily during pandemic, um, and it was the pandemic itself and the I want to say the boredom, not the boredom of pandemic, but the time that you had that provoked you or inspired Freedom. that it provoked you to create this album because you were busy learning how to sing writing music and then you decide why don't we make an album of this uh, what i like about this album mostly is that it's so different from your previous recorded um eps when we listen to what's on youtube for um uh, tidy knots and um also what we can hear with the muti album this seems 
completely different. Not just because it's acoustic, but the entire concept of the album or the layering of the album. I want to know, was it intentional to go this minimalist or was it just happy accident, if you will? <laughs> no, it was, it was on intention. Um, um, Jack White, you know, he, um, he, he forces himself to be very minimalistic sometimes, you know, with, uh, with the white stripes. Yeah. And he, he once explained that um, it forces you to work with what you got. And it, what that does is if you only have two elements or three elements or four elements, then that's all you got. You're going to make that work and sound good. Yeah, you got to make so it sound it good. It really forces you to really work on, on, on the elements that you use. So it was completely intentional. That's mm. why the, the recording is also very minimalistic mm. because I wanted to force myself. If I'm going to sing on an album for the first time, I'm going to have to force myself just to either practice a lot and do it right. Uh, or not do it at all. Yeah. I saw I did cut a lot of songs as well because it was just not good enough. But what what is also really great about this album, if I can say so um, for you, is that it, this album sounds like you're at a concert. It fe it feels very intimate, but it doesn't sound like a live concert with those technical issues that you usually would have, or that it doesn't sound the vocals aren't that great, or whatever, whatever. It sounds at the best possible quality, a live concert in a tiny bar somewhere. Um, and it's just yeah. the, the, guitar, the, the guy and his guitar just playing around, which is really great. And I'm really interested because you had a lot of challenges when recording this album, because you did not record this album in a studio. <laughs> no, 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 no. 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 <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about the, the recording challenges that you faced. I most I use this mic for everything, and then uh, my bandmate Tyron he bought me an uh, AK2. Where is it? I think here it is. Um, wait, wait, so here, hang on. He bought me this mic, the AKG. Uh, no, no, I, I always say AKG. Uh, AT uh, AT twenty twenty at Atika. Um, Audio Technica. Sorry, I was always say AKG for some reason. Mm. Um, so I uh, prim primarily recorded this 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 mic, and this mic you don't need to be in a in a in a, a in studio a, setup. A, a studio because it's um you know it's a SM57 and it's um mm. what is it called? It's condensed condensed Con mic. No, there's a name for it. It doesn't pick up a lot of, a lot of room sound. And then he got me this mic, and then I built like a, a, a home studio, basically using my bed and an extra mattress and a mattress well, sound in my house and the door and the, and just soundproofing at home. And it <laughs> it looks so weird. And then I had like the a rug and my dogs just sleeping at my feet and pillows everywhere and uh, and uh, and uh, blankets everywhere. And I just basically did it that way. But that's amazing because it but goes back to some the of the songs. I really struggled to to get it right and like lens for example onions and so they don't sound as good as i wish i had them but i just i those were the best takes and i didn't use the soundproofing mm. right or i didn't use it so i just they, yeah so it's not technically the best recording but it somehow works it works really <laughs> well it really feels so, like you're in the room with the listener uh, well that's that's amazing to say because i really struggle with the mixing because we, I wanted to keep it really. Tyron did. Tyron, my bandmate, he did a lot of the mixing, and then I did more of the mixing because I just, I can't stop. Once once I start with the mixing, it's like it's like it, I I I remixed the songs like like thirty times, and he had done like ten revs as well. Mm. And like yeah, it's it's. You it's, get very <laughs> micromanageable about it, but that's it's it's yeah. really it's it's cool to see that you use such a bare minimum setup for the recording, the at home recording, if you put it, with the mattresses and the carpets and the dogs, because that it goes back to what you said about Jack White and his minimalist uh, worldview, uh, where you're forced to use the bare minimum. So you just do it, just, just do it and, and get the best yourself to, to make that better, to make it better. Exactly. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, and I want to, oh, I want to pull this music apart, like word for word, chord for chord. I just like listening, especially to the lyrics that you use and everything. Um, especially with Tiny House, you said earlier you wrote it about a girl and just generally your entire album, it's 
it, it's like reading someone's diary. I feel like I've lived your life just listening to the lyrics. Um, because every it's like all the emotions are poured into the lyrics, and then the, you have the accompanying melody and everything, and just builds upon what the person was feeling, what or what you essentially were feeling. And especially Tiny House, if you listen to, uh, for those that are watching, if you go listen to the lyrics, it reads like a fairy tale, like a very humble love, but the love was lost, and it's a really sad story if I can speak for you, for your lyrics. It's a very sad story if you go just read the lyrics, but then the instrumentation's so upbeat. So you end up feeling, should I feel bad for this relationship? Or no. like, what what, no, what that is the happening? Um, I, was, I was trying to hide it because it's really easy to make a whiny song. That's the problem with the guitar. Is that... It's, most people's first songs tend to be very whiny. So yeah, that's, that's what's like, is it... Have you not really? Have you, no. I've, maybe I've met too many musicians <laughs> who just started out, but yeah, it's just, it's very, it's, it's so easy to make it whiny. Yeah, that's so, what I was like. Well, I just sing too fast. The, blah, 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 blah. The, the, because, yeah, talk. Be, because, the, because the lyrics are so self reflective, and you can see it was a real, uh, it's a real relationship you're speaking about or singing about, but then the melody and the, uh, the accompaniment is so upbeat. I'm like, this, did he do this intentionally, or was it just how he feels about it now because as you said guitar music can sound no, very whiny very not. very fast um that actually goes into the oh no it was it was all in, in, intentional it was, like it's it, because the thing is it's it's it was supposed to be authentic real lyrics and i didn't only write from my point of view i wrote from hers as well mm. and but the thing is is it's 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 avoiding whiny sad songs that just sound sad the whole time and just like it's like oh god can this guy just move on with life <laughs> so it's trying to avoid that feeling yeah and hiding you know hiding or either i wrote a lot of this in, in, in a sarcastic manner yeah a lot of my music i write in a sarcastic manner or from her point of view or from my or from the world so so i try to try to hide it's easy to say i love you but Try to say it in a new way. Yeah. Anyone can write a love song, but trying to... All the great love songs have been written, but the, the, if you want to write a love song today, you just got to write it in a new way. How do you see this? Where does it come from? Why? It's like it's like being a stand-up comedian. Like, everyone has spoken about the same premises over and over and over. But the great ones, they find new ways new to ways. say the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but that also goes yeah. back to what I heard is you talk about this fairy tale and everything, which uh, fairy tale love stories, love lost, love in general, love ballads have been written, you know, ad a nauseum. Like everyone's written a love song some way. But what I like about the song is, especially Tiny House as a track on this album is, it's one of the few songs that just use guitar and vocals. There's not much else. And the uh, the picking of the guitar strings, that little riff that you do with the picking is so simplistic. And I think it really reflects your minimal um, choice with this whole album. And it brings, it's so reflective of the album itself, not just the words and the melody, et cetera, et cetera. It just reflects so well that this is a self-made album written all, most of it in between two mattresses and a carpet. It's so simplistic and it speaks about your character and her character and where you come from. And it's so nice. Um, but that, that leads me to the question is why did you choose tiny house as your titular track like why did you name your album after this this track specifically okay well um uh firstly uh, you mentioned uh the fairy tale yeah. which i've no, not heard yet in all fairness she's she's not a she's not a horrible monster it's just what what had happened was i i fell in love and i pulled her up in my mm. mind and she was no way in, in the same place. But I mean, honestly, she's not the, she's not perfect. Mm. Everyone makes mistakes, but she made a lot of them. And so did I. And, uh, and it, it just, it just, all of it broke. Oh, yeah. All of it just like, it was, it, actually, it was very toxic. So I'm not, I'm not going to try to demonize her or like women bad or whatever. <laughs> but it was just like the whole situation that the way I was thinking about it, building up my mind and, and everything, it's just like, if, if it sounds like a fairy tale, it's because this is from my mind, because I had built mm. it up so much. And in, in on paper, perfect. It would have been a perfect relationship. And you know, I think I just I was so ready to get married or, or whatever. And uh, she was, 
She was nowhere near that. And uh, I, don't, I don't think she ever loved me. She said she did, but... Uh, right, love, I wrong it. time. Anyway, What's that saying? Right, love, wrong time. No, nah, there's there's nothing like that. It's always wrong. And um, and then... um, And then... So if it sounds a little bit like a fairy tale, then that's good because I had built it up in my mind so much. Mm. And uh, so, yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, why we, why um, did you choose this tiny house as the song to name your album after? Because... Um, because I wanted to refer to uh, that song "Tiny House" and the 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 name "Tiny House" refers to um, to to a thing that we used to do um, when she had a very bad day. Mm-hmm. Um, I would I would hold she would she would we would be both in in a fetus position yeah. on a bed, and then I would I would just listen to her day, and there was just this, like this little world that we created. And um and you know just referring back to anyone's childhood building a fort or a, a you know a, if you're lucky enough to build a tree yeah. house that kind safe of safe like, spaces that kind of like I wanted to tap into that emotion of of like this little this little perfect world and once you step out of that world it's all yeah fun. but once you and once you're there it's fine but yeah that's 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 what I um but I remember uh, the the thing is what was important to me is, is I wanted to feel the way I feel but also not just demonize it. Yeah. Like, oh, you suck, blah, blah, blah. It's easy to write. Oh, you it's... suck, you suck. Yeah, you suck. <laughs> like, whatever. But I wanted to make it like, I wanted to make it. It really uh, comes through. It to make you care. It really comes through with the You know lyrics. what actually inspired me more, yeah. more than anything? Black Mirror. Oh, wait, right. The series. Because they make you care. Mm. And I wanted to, I wanted you to care about the situation. I wanted to, I, I learned how to write in such a way that I, I give you something and then I take. But it you away. can really, you can really feel it throughout the lyrics. When you, if 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 you forget the music, you just read the lyrics as it would be yeah. a story or a poem or whatever, a section from a book. You can really get that feeling of it's a it's a really humble love story. You can see that he did yeah. everything he could. It's she did. No, oh, it's a really. I think it's really great. Really, thank you for co-piloting this rocket ship today. And before we check our engines, I want to give you a chance to shout out any platforms or projects before we go. The floor is yours once again. <laughs> um, uh, I, I used to play in this, this band, Necroma, and I think there's still... So uh, if you search Necroma, um, that we have four EPs out, but uh, the band doesn't exist anymore. There's some things that happened. Um, and then Muti oh. Dahlia. It's on all the uh, streaming pa- platforms on YouTube. There are the, the whole album, uh, Spotify, wherever you want to listen to it. It does fall under different artists sometimes, which is very weird. I think it's a streaming platform, so just, we try to fix it. The same with my album, Tiny House, uh, Rudy Tiny House. Um, on Spotify, I checked. It's definitely under my name. Uh, but on some pa- platforms, it might be weird. But yeah, uh, that's so it's uh, Necroma you can check out. Um, uh, Muti Dahlia. Uh, my album uh, Tiny House on all the streaming platforms, Rudy. And then um, I only do um, I only do TikTok because it gets more views. Uh, I've given up on Instagram and Facebook because there's just too much competition. But TikTok seems to get more views. So um, um, so it's Rudy underscore music. And then if you have any questions for me, um, then you can also email me at rudylovesmusic at gmail.com. Yeah. Awesome. We'll link um, most of those things in the description for everyone that wants to go and follow you, especially on TikTok. But listeners and fellow astronauts out there, from me, Leonie Paulson, and my guest, Rudy, we want to thank you for joining us here at the Stellar Sound Podcast. But the countdown has begun, and it's time to blast off into the stellar sphere. Until we meet again... <laughs> Till next time at the Stella Magellan.